Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Quadrilaterals, the beginning of the chapter. Um, lesson number one of online learning. So let's be excited. Let's see how this goes. Starting with quadrilaterals. Um, again, best thing about this chapter is it's the last one with proofs, and then we move on. So you guys are looking out with uh, being online. We won't be able to do so much of them. But quadrilaterals. Well, what is a quadrilateral? Well, the official definition of a quadrilateral is, well, any four-sided figure. So any four-sided figure, four-sided figure is a quadrilateral. So what are some of the quadrilaterals? Well, first off, we have a parallelogram. Parallelogram is going to be a quadrilateral where both sides of a parallelogram have opposite sides that are parallel. So we have these two here that'll be parallel. These two here that'll be parallel. Rhombus is going to be a parallelogram. So it's going to have the same thing, opposite sides parallel. However, opposite sides are also, well, all the sides, not just opposite, are going to be congruent. They're all going to be the same. Rectangle, again, parallelogram, so opposite sides, parallel. However, it's going to have four right angles. And a square is going to be a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. So if you think about it, square is going to be what a rhombus and a rectangle are put together. A kite, not just something that you're going to go fly. Now, obviously, that you have more time, you could go out and fly a kite. But a kite is actually going to be a quadrilateral where there are two pairs of adjacent sides. So, like these two are next to each other, these two are next to each other, that are going to be congruent. Opposite sides are not, and opposite sides are not parallel. So, a kite, not going to be a parallelogram, but it has those distinct figures, features. And lastly, we have a trapezoid which is going to be a quadrilateral, but only one set of parallel sides. So in this case, our top and our bottom sides are parallel. Now, if the opposite sides that aren't parallel are congruent, then it's going to be an isosceles trapezoid. Just like isosceles triangle, if uh, two set of sides are congruent, it's isosceles triangle here, isosceles trapezoid, you have one set of sides, so two sides are going to be congruent. So we can start classifying these. If we look at this one, well, what could this all be? Well, first off, does it have four sides? Yeah, it does. So it's a quadrilateral. Well, then we can start looking at, well, our opposite sides parallel. Yeah, they look parallel. So we can say this is a parallelogram. And the last thing we could say is, well, they look like they all four have right angles. So this is a rectangle. Okay. Anything else? Well, they don't look like all four sides are the same, so it can't be a rhombus. Well, if all four sides aren't the same, it's also not a square. We have two sets of parallel sides, so it's not a kite, and it's also not a trapezoid. So this is what we could all call it. It could be a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, and a rectangle. Now, when you do this on your homework, you're going to need to list all of these out. So as long as that's four sides, it's a quad, and then look for those other features. Okay? On to the next page. So... Here's how the quadrilaterals all fit together. So first off, it has four sides, it's a quadrilateral, everything's going to be there. Then you're going to start looking for, well, does it have parallel sides? If there's no sides that are parallel, it's a kite. If we have one set, well, then we can start going through and being a trapezoid. Well, if it's a trapezoid, do we have those set of sides that are congruent? If it is, it's isosceles trapezoid, otherwise it's just a trapezoid. When we have two pairs of congruent sides, or parallel sides, parallelogram, and then we can start branching off there. Does it have forward angles? Yes, it's a rectangle. Does it have four uh, congruent sides? Yes, it's a rhombus. If it has both of those, it can be a square. 
So this is kind of a visual representat representations of how the quadrilaterals all fit together. Another way that we can classify these are by their slope. So if we look at this one right here, we're going to determine whether this is a quadrilateral or not. So if we start finding slope, we're looking at ln. So L to M here. Our y's would be 3 minus 2 over our x's 3 minus 1. So 1 over 2, a half. So now we're going to go to mn. Here we have our y's of 3 and 2 again. So 3 minus 2 over x's of uh, 5. We're going to do 3 and 5. 3 minus 5, which would equal a negative 1 half. Pn, this one right here. So, y's of 2 minus 1 over our x's of 5 minus 3. Should be 1 half. And lastly, Lp, y's of 1 minus 2 over our x's of 3 minus 1. Be a negative half. So, are we parallel here? Well, we have two sides that have the same slope. And another set of two sides there are the same slope. So this is for sure a parallelogram. So you, doing the same thing here. Right now, all we know, opposite sides are, con are the same slope. So we know it's a parallelogram. Let's slide this up over it. We're using the same thing. So the next part about this is, well, are we gonna have the same lengths? If we know they're all the same lengths, then we can classify it as something else, you know, something that's more than just a parallelogram. So distance formula, starting with ln. So we have the square root of our x is three minus one squared plus our y's 3 and 2, so 3 minus 2, squared. 3 minus 1 would be 2, 2 squared will give us 4. 3 minus 2 would be 1, 1 squared would be 1. We end up with the square root of 5. Uh, next one, we have NP. So we're going to do this one right here. We're going to do that opposite side. We're going to see if it's going to be the same length. So square root, starting with our x's here, 5 minus 3 squared plus our y's of 2 minus 1. So again, 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 squared, 4. 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. We're going to get a square root of 5. Mn now. So, so far so good. Everything's the same. Let's keep it going. Mn, we have 5 minus 3 again. For those x's squared plus the y's of 2 minus 3. So, 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared, 4 again. 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. The negative 1 squared is still a plus 1. So again, square root of 5. We're going to do the last one for good measure. So starting with our x's, 1 and 3, 3 minus 1 squared plus our y's of 1 and 2. So 1 minus 2 squared. Same thing, 4 plus 1. We're going to get 2 squared, negative 1 squared square root of 5. So, if they're all the same, and we know it's a parallelogram, we can call this one a rhombus. So, as we go through these, um, as you're watching it online, uh, definitely, you know, if you have questions, you know, if something doesn't make sense, pause it, go back, um, you know, go through, watch it again. If I'm going through fast, you know, and you want to work this out on your own and see if you get the right answers, again, pause the video, work it out, see what you end up with.
the last thing we're going to do is we're going to find these variables of the kite. Now, we have a couple sides here that we can't see. Um, over here, what we don't see here is a K. This top side is X plus 6. The bottom side is going to be 3X minus 5. So, what do we know about a kite? Well, we know adjacent sides are going to be congruent. Well, what do we have on top here? Those are going to be our adjacent sides. We're going to set those to be congruent. So, 2y plus 5 is going to be equal to an x plus 6. The other set of congruent sides would be down here on the bottom, because those are our other adjacent sides. So, we would set up 2x plus 4 equaling 3x minus 5. Now, in our first set here, we have an X, we have a Y. You know, we need everything to be the same. We need to know what that other letter is. So we're actually going to pause on this one. We're going to do the bottom one first because they are both X's. So we would subtract the 2X over. And then we would add the 5. 4 and 5 make 9. That cancels. That cancels. 3X minus 2X is X. So you know X is going to be 9. We can take that put it in right there. So we really have 2y plus 5 equaling 9 plus 6. 9 plus 6 is going to be 15. We know 2y plus 5 is 15. Subtract your 5 from both sides. I'm just going to scoot this over. 2y would then equal 10. So we divide by 2. y would equal 5. And that is it for this lesson. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you do, uh, post them to the message board and I can try to answer them the best I can. Um, this lesson, we're just going to do stuff out of the book. So once you're done, um, so you'll do the problems and then take a picture of it and try to upload that to the site then, just like we did with the assignment from Tuesday. Um, again, let me know if there's any questions. If there's something you would like me to do different with these lessons as I'm videoing them, please let me know, and I will try to do that. Um, but until then, I guess good luck, and let me know how things go. See you later, guys.